In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, Jesus tells a parable. The headline in my Bible is that it's called the parable of the wedding feast. Jesus tells this parable in way of reply to the chief priests, the elders, the Pharisees, the people who are questioning his authority, his authority to cleanse the temple, his authority to heal the sick. They are, are disputing his authority and questioning his authority. And this is all leading up to the ultimate rejection of Jesus, presenting Jesus to Pontius Pilate, saying that he is worthy of death. We know, of course, that this is leading to the cross where Jesus paid the price for our sin and brought us redemption. But Jesus tells this parable, along with other, other parables, in response to this forthcoming rejection of him as the Messiah, as the Son of God. So let's begin reading in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 1. It says, And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king, who arranged a marriage for his son, and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Here in this parable we see two things. First of all, we see the patience that God extended to Israel. He sent servants to bring the invitation. He sent the prophets. But then when Jesus came, the nation rejected him, sent him to the cross. But then it says that he sent out other servants, saying, come. This speaks of the apostles who, after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ, after the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, went out and proclaimed the gospel, first of all, to the people of Israel. But we know that great persecution came against the apostles and the disciples as they went out. We see Stephen being martyred. We see all of the terrible things that, that the nation of Israel did to those who were proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so God sends his servants, that is his disciples, to the highways. This speaks of the rest of the world. Remember, John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But I want you to notice the selection criteria. He says, go out into the highways and they gather together all whom they found, both bad and good. The selection criteria for entry into the wedding feast obviously is not based on what is bad or good. There is a different criteria for those who are given entry into the wedding feast. Here we see in verse 11, remember, all those who are invited are bad or good. No differentiation here between bad or good. All are invited. God so loved the world, whether good or bad. He loved the world. But verse 11 says, when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. 
this is the man who was thrown out of the wedding. He was cast out into outer darkness, not based on whether he was bad or good. He was not invited to the wedding based on whether he was bad or good. He was invited to the wedding feast on the basis of the, the king wanted his son to be honoured in this wedding feast. And he wanted the feast to be full. It's so wonderful to know that God wants heaven to be full. God isn't going, you're good, you're bad, you're awful, you're terrible. And, and saying, that's it. There is a different criteria for the invitation. Whether you're good or bad makes no difference. How you get in is based on one thing. Whether you are wearing the garments that God provides you to wear. That is the criteria for entry in to the wedding feast. If you turn to um, Isaiah, chapter four, Isaiah 64 and verse 6. It tells us that our righteousnesses are like filthy rags in God's sight. All of our good works, all of the things that we think we're doing well, all of the things that we come before God saying, hey, God, look how well I've done, count as nothing. They're like filthy rags in God's sight. So our righteousnesses is not what provides us with the, the wedding garment. The wedding garment is something that is given by the king. It's about who the king delights to give a wedding garment to. Remember the criteria is not whether they are good or bad. It's who the king delights to give the wedding garment to. If you turn to the book of Esther chapter 6, beginning at verse 6, we see the king asking this question. What shall be done? For the man whom the king delights to honour. And Haman thought in his heart, whom would the king delight to honour more than me? And Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delights to honour. Let a royal robe be brought, which the king has worn, and a horse on which the king has ridden, which has a royal crest placed on its head. Then let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the man whom the king delights to honour. Then parade him on horseback through the city square and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honour. Then the king said to Haman, hurry, take the robe and the horse as you have suggested and do so for Mordecai the Jew who sits within the king's gate. Leave nothing undone of what you have spoken. So Haman took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai and led him on horseback through the city square and proclaimed before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honour. How often do we see that phrase, whom the king delights to honour? At wedding feasts, kings, wealthy men would give their guests a wedding garment. The guests had done nothing to deserve the garment. The garment was given purely at the king or the wealthy man's discretion, who he delighted to give them to. They were all invited, whether good or bad, but entry into the feast depended on whether they were wearing the wedding garment, because not to wear the wedding garment meant to hold that king or that wealthy man in great dishonour. It meant that you didn't count their liberality as something important. You disregarded them. You were scornful toward them. Anyone not wearing a wedding garment would not be allowed in to the wedding. We have been given wedding garments. But what are those garments? If you turn to Isaiah 61, we see the reason why Jesus came. Isaiah 61. Let's just turn there for a moment. Isaiah 61, in verse 3, it says that Jesus came to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And then going on to verse 10, 
The prophet declares, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. God says, I am giving you garments of salvation. I am giving you the garment of praise. I am giving you the robe of righteousness. Remember, it's not our own robes because our righteousnesses are like filthy rags in God's sight. No, God says, I am giving you righteousness. Whether you are good or bad, I am offering you righteousness. Then it is up to us what we do with those wedding clothes will we accept the righteousness that only god can give us or will we turn up wearing filthy rags not wearing the wedding garment jesus has given us robes of righteousness god has given us garments of salvation to wear if we will accept them anything else is to hold the cross of christ in scorn Jesus died on the cross, bore all of our sin, bore all the punishment of our sin, did everything necessary so that we can have salvation, so that we could have redemption, so that we can receive the gift of everlasting life. It's not by our works. The man was thrown out of the wedding feast in the parable because he was not wearing the garments provided. God has extended the invitation to the whole world whether good or bad. But the question is, will you receive the garment of salvation? Will you receive the wedding garment that God has given you to wear so that you can enter in to the marriage feast of the Lamb? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 says this, For by grace you have been saved. What is grace? Whom the King delights to honour. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let's give God the glory. He has so loved the world that he's extended his invitation to both good and bad. And he has given wedding garments to all who choose to wear them. So choose to wear those garments today. Rejoice in God who has in his liberality given us wedding garments to wear. Don't rely on your own works. You won't get in. But when you come to Christ, when you turn to Jesus Christ, in faith and belief that the work Jesus did on the cross was enough for your salvation, you receive those wedding robes and you are allowed to enter in. Glory be to God. Amen.